those days. Warning, listening to Unleash Your Genius can be good for your health. Symptoms may include looking and feeling better. More energy, healthier kids, and increased productivity. Unleash Your Genius podcast brings you the science, art, and philosophy of health, wellness, epigenetics, and lifestyle. Hey, what's up? Welcome to the Unleash Your Genius podcast. I'm Dr. Brian. I'm so thankful that you're here, and I'm excited to introduce my next guest, who is Michael Rutherford. He's a recent graduate of the Nutritional Therapy Association, where he, this is where he learned how to practice functional nutrition. The NTA is rooted in using diet and nutrition to optimize healthy function in the body, and it's based on a nutrient-dense, anti-inflammatory style diet, um, using hopefully locally prepared foods. Uh, Michael is also certified as a primal health coach, and he loves to combine the two practices to help create a unique and individual plan for each of his clients. When not working with clients, he loves hiking and spending time with his twin three-year-old boys. And he lives in the Pacific Northwest, so he backpacks and fishes in the mountains and streams around the beautiful coastline up around the Washington, Oregon area. Uh, and he also loves researching nutritional findings. You may also find him searching the aisles of the local co-op or Whole Foods browsing for the best deals on new foods. Michael has a previous background in the culinary industry of nearly 15 years where he fine-tuned his ability to create not only healthy foods, but dishes that are not lacking in flavor and excitement. So I'm excited to introduce my guest to you, who is Michael Rutherford. Hey, Michael, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for being here. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. You know, I know I've already introduced you, but uh, can you tell us a little bit more about you? You know, who you are, you know, what you do, that kind of stuff? Yeah, so I am most currently a nutritional therapy practitioner through the through the NTA, so I'm super excited about that. I literally just finished um, my finals uh, on the 17th of November, so just a few weeks ago. Um, from the recording of this and actually took another week to finalize my homework. Uh, I still had some assignments to, to finish up. So I rushed in and I got those submitted with nine hours to spare. So nice. that was, that was, uh, that was a little stressful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also a primal health coach, um, through primal, through primal blueprint. And uh, I graduated from that, uh, about a year and a half ago. It was towards the end about last, uh, summer of 2016, uh, I finished there I'd started that. That one took me far too long. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was super excited. I've been getting into this nutrition for about three years now, but as I've been digging into it, um, it also, it's easy to remember because at times with the birth of my twin children, I have two twin boys. Um, and so it's very easy to remember. They were also, they were part of, uh, what got me interested in this along with just my dad kind of giving me, um, some books to read that were really just, mind blowing on, you know, what's happening with our food system. Um, everything down to, you know, glyphosate being spread on grains right before they harvest them to increase the harvest. And that just didn't sound right at all as far as being healthy by any means. And so I just wanted to dig into it and just dug and dug and dug. I mean, I read about three dozen books in a year um, with hours and hours of podcasts and, you know, reading through you know, interviews and all sorts of things and just anything to get my hands on, I wanted to learn. Um, and that's just kind of how I can be in general. Uh, when I get something new, I'm all in. I want to know, you know, I want to be as much, uh, you know, as knowledgeable as I can about it um, and, and don't stop until I feel like I start to, to get to that. Right. And three years later, I don't feel anywhere close. I feel like there's, it's just more doors and more doors. And it's like, oh, my God, that's a whole nother pathway. Um, my what I'm, what I'm noticing that I like to kind of work with a lot um, is um, immunity in general, both autoimmune um, and cancer. Support. Uh, it's just two things that really pull at my strings that just interest me and what I like to kind of work with. Um, so I've been really digging into that. And that's been kind of my my post, you know, education is, uh, is going on. Those, so it's, it's very exciting where I'm going there. Um, prior to, to this changing career, I spent, um, almost 15 years working in the, uh, hospitality industry as a cook and chef from anywhere from the tiny mom and pop that only sat 50 people to, uh, one of the highest, 
uh, rated restaurants in the country here in the United States, as well as uh, big, huge banquets at convention centers. So I kind of did it all, hopped all around the place, learned a lot of things. Um, my favorite thing about that, now that I'm leaving it, is that it was still very food centered um, because I was cooking food. And so I've learned a lot of tips and tricks as to how to make preparing food easier, how to make it taste good, um, what that entails and how to do it sim in a simple manner so that someone isn't spending, you know, three hours a day slaving away in the kitchen just to make these healthy foods. Um, so a lot of my education with my clients is revolved around, you know, how do you make these foods taste good and healthy and not take three hours? <laughs> right. So I, lo I love being able, I love that even though it's a totally different career, I'm able to utilize a lot of my old career in this new change um, and really help the people that I work with uh, with one of the biggest struggles. And that's, you know, when you're making real foods, it is going to be more of, a, a, of an effort and more time, um, but it doesn't have to make you a slave in the kitchen. Right. So that's a really good combination, that, that um, experience that you had with all of the, uh, with the cooking and now combining that with your, you know, with the knowledge of what kind of foods people should be eating. What a great yeah. combination. So, Michael, tell me about the, tell me about your, um, the degree that you just, um, you got. It was in uh, nutrition. Is it nutritional therapy? What, yes. Uh, yes. So the, uh, the Nutritional Therapy Association is, they were, they've been around for almost two decades now. Um, and it was, it was started here in Olympia, Washington. Uh, in the United States, and it's this by a guy and his wife who really just kind of started it all. And it first just started out him doing like weekend seminars over a few months um, to doctors and physicians uh, to teach them about nutrition because doctors don't learn about it. Uh, and he was educating professionals in this manner, and it eventually just grew. Um, and now there's almost uh, almost seven thousand NTPs out there um, anywhere they. We're all over the world, but classes right now are spread out all over the United States, as well as a class every year in Australia. Um, but we have NTPs that are scattered across Europe as well and in some other countries. So it's really phenomenal. It's a nine-month program, and you learn what we call the foundations, uh, and that is digestion. It's rooted in um, you know, real whole nutrient dense foods that are properly prepared, hopefully locally sourced as much as possible. So just this really, you know, good food based foundation. Um, but on top of that is, you know, proper digestion, the balance of fatty acids, sugar handling, uh, hydration and mineral balance. Um, and it's basically what has been found in nutrition is that you need all of those five things on top of good whole real food to really control the rest of your health and all of the other problems that happen in our, in our health, all of these chronic issues, our endocrine issues, uh, problems in our immune system all relate back to these five foundations. And that when you address these five foundations, everything else starts to, um, you know, be corrected. Uh, so we we're not licensed. We're not, you know, a medical doctor by any means. We're not an RD. We're not a registered dietitian or certified or a licensed nutritionist. It is just a certification. Um, so we don't treat or cure, diagnose. Uh, the way we talk about things is addressing dysfunction or deficient or deficiency in the body, um, which is not a, a diagnosis by any means. It's just saying, you know, oh, your gallbladder seems to, you know, need some support, and so we do nutritional support well through food and supplements uh, to be able to just bring that that system back up to proper you know functions we don't need to say that oh you have gallbladder disease or gallstones to know that we need to support it uh, it's great if the client knows that because they're working with a doctor and that was and that's we always encourage them to work with you know a primary care physician to to handle that side um, and anything we obviously want to know any of that information uh, so we can adjust correctly. Uh, but it's really using food and sometimes some targeted supplementation to bring proper function inside the body, specifically in these five foundations that really carries over to the rest of our health. Right. Can What were those five foundations again? Uh, digestion, fatty acid balance, hydration, minerals, and blood sugar regulation. Okay. Cool. So what um, can you uh, can I pick your brain a little bit about the the fatty acid balance? Can you how yeah. how do we do that? How would you how would you is there like general advice that you would give everyone as to how to do that? 
and what, you know, maybe describe what fatty acids are first. Yeah. So we have, you know, we have, first of all, we have the essential fatty acids, which are, uh, ALA and LA, which are an omega three and omega six. So these are, and these are generally plant forms. These are the true essential fatty acids. Then we have the conditionally fatty acids, which are really still essential for 98% of the population. And that's GLA, EPA, and DHA. Um, but these fatty acids, they really, they have a lot of roles in our body. Um, so they come from, you know, fats, primarily, um, polyunsaturated fats, but we have to be really careful with those because we know that those can be damaged really easily. So the quality that we get these from really, really matter. And that's our biggest problem now is fatty acid deficiency or imbalance is one of the biggest nutritional um, epidemics that we face as a world, really, especially in the, you know, in any industrialized world, uh, because all of these, you know, processes that we see, the canola, the soy, the corn, the safflower, all of these oils go through really high processing and it damages these really fragile fats. Um, and when we have bad fats or we have a really big imbalance of our omega-3 and our omega-6, is that it causes a lot of problems in our body. Um, you know, fats are important for so many things from inflammation, our immune function, um, to our hormones. It contro they control and make up you know, part of every single cell membrane is made from fatty acids. So we need these really for just true optimal function of health, general health. And uh, just the normal, you know, standard diet in these industrial worlds just over and with bad fats and damaged fats. Uh, and so when we have that, you know, those are one of the biggest building blocks. To really, and when we're missing those or they're damaged, we're building, you know, a damaged body because we damage and so that's really what it's about and the the best way to you know start to address that and fix that is getting away from processed foods getting away from the industrial seed oils um and getting back to real whole foods get back to healthy fats that we've always had around thousands of years things like coconuts and olives and animal fats butter uh, all of these fats that have been culturally around for thousands of years uh are their or the healthy fat months getting things like fish uh, and you know, salmon and sardines, uh, some shellfish are you know, carry the good omega because we need that back of omega three to omega six. And omega six is so easy to get, it's all over the place. And we really need to focus on getting more omega three cents. Not that we need a lot of them. Um, but that we need a, a, we need it in balance to that six because they both carry such important roles in our body. We can't have just one, um, and that's really that's one of those things that we see just in everyone is that they have either some sort of imbalance or deficiency, uh, and that is, that is tied into digestion. Digestion is really like the core of all of our health because it's not just what we're putting in our body, but what we're able to pull out of it pull out of that food so if we're not digesting you know properly it doesn't matter how great a food we're putting in if we're not able to properly break it down um, so taking care of the gut and the gallbladder and the pancreas which are really the three big players in our digestion is so super important um, to be able to the stomach and the small intestine is where it's all happening but the the, the gallbladder and the pancreas are these you know these two organs that are coming in and helping in that digestion you know they're sending the the compounds and the enzymes and things that are used to break down these foods properly um and you know the gallbladder is such a big part of of the fat digestion and it's you know it's kind of like the the appendix you know doctors just think that it's not important and we can take it out because we can live without it so they think it's not important and it's really just untrue the gallbladder is such a crucial important part of proper digestion and so many people who have them taken out in a lifetime of just digestive problems and fatty acid deficiency problems that, that you can see that are you know so correlated to that even things like dandruff and you know prior oily skin um cracked fingernails things that peel, you know that they feel easily all of these things and um, can really be linked back to a fatty acid deficiency or imbalance. Um, you know, rampant inflammation can come back to this, you know, imbalance of fatty acids. 
And it's so common in people that don't have a gallbladder because they're just not able to properly digest the, the fat when they eat them. Right. So when you um, when you balance out these fatty acids, um, you most of it, is it mostly through food? You know, do you um, do you suggest that people eat more fish? Is typically what we get with the omega threes, right? That's commonly what you think about. So how do you um, how would you, how would you suggest that people balance those out? Do you suggest fish oil or supplementation? I know uh, you mentioned getting rid of the um, getting rid of the processed foods. Is there uh, is there supplementation, things like that, that you recommend? Yeah, so th this is one of those things where it's just really hard to get enough omega-3s without supplementing. Um, you know, unless you just have great access or you really enjoy fish or you can afford it. Um, you know, sometimes it's one of those things where supplementing really helps. Um, and it's always going to be this ongoing battle. Uh, so I definitely do encourage the supplementation of omega threes with fish oil. Um, and, but then also getting these foods because we don't just want to, you know, eat what we want and then try and supplement our way out of it. So really still focusing on good, healthy fats and not just the omega three and omega six, the omega nines that we see, um, from avocado oil and olives is also really important. So using these good fats and using them in the right ways, um, and, uh, yeah, the, but that's the supplementing is definitely one of those that I, I do generally recommend that that is just a supplement that someone takes on a daily basis. There's so many benefits to it. Um, and it's just hard to get enough in the right way. I mean, I tend to think that I eat, a, you know, a really well balanced diet and I probably only get seafood maybe four times a week. Um, yeah. and ideally we'd want it one to two times a day to really, right. you know, be getting enough, um, and so, yeah, it's, you know, it's one of those things where we supplement and it can really have some great benefits, but it's important to get good quality fish oils because, again, these are very easily damaged fats and they're very fragile. Um, so focusing on getting, you know, making sure the brand that you're getting is a good quality is really important. Nice. Yeah. That's the same advice I've been giving our clients for a long time is you know, that they're so easily damaged that you can't just get the the cheap bottle in the front of the chemist or the, the pharmacy, you know, you've got to, you might have to spend a little bit of extra money to get the good stuff. So Michael, yes, totally. Hey, um, so you're also, you mentioned that you're a primal health coach. Tell us, so how did you, how did you find out about the primal health and, and how did you first come across that? Yeah. So like I said, I started getting about three years ago, I just started digging into all of this totally different like thought process behind health and nutrition and what that really means and it's i think it's hard to get into this world without cross marxist and primal blueprint he's been such a big player and an influencer in this field and so i came across it and i was really digging it i read a couple of his earlier books the original primal blueprint primal endurance um and some couple other different titles uh that came from primal publishing and then he really, I saw this ad for the health coaching and I was like, Oh my goodness, like this is what I need because I, I want to, even if it was just for my own knowledge, I wanted to, it was this concrete system of learning. I was like, even if I never coached anybody, I want to learn this from my own self. Right. Um, and so I just, I just started, I mean, it was be able to pass up. It was a dollar to sign up and $99 a month until you paid it off. I was like, I can afford that. I start for a dollar. Right. <laughs> uh, their advertising totally dug me in. It worked. Uh, but I loved it. I loved every minute of it. It was phenomenal information. Um, it's a great, it's, it's growing huge now. I mean, the amount of people, I think, you know, we've got a Facebook group and I think when I, you know, signed up or when I got into the group, which wasn't until I graduated, there was like 300 and now there's almost 900 in the group. It's almost tripled in the last year and a half. And it's just phenomenal. Yeah. And it's been around for a few years, but they really blew the program up over the last year. Um, and so it's just, it's been great. He's Marxist and just has a phenomenal way of thinking about just health in general from a very clear mind that isn't too crazy about any one thing it's you know so many so often we see you know someone who is the quote unquote a uh, quote unquote expert in xyz you know and that's everything is that you know it's that old saying of you know when you have a hammer everything looks like a nail um, right. they just think you know a keto expert thinks that keto is the solution to 
everything. Um, and it's always this, you know, if it, and if something isn't going right, that it's never that problem. It's always because of the person and something else. Um, but Mark really brings a clear head. And one of the things that really stuck with me is that uh, even though there's some limit, uh, uh, you know, elimination to the diet and some exercise things and things like that is really his, his big idea is that we should be trying to get away with as much as possible while still getting optimal results. So it shouldn't be that we restrict our foods down to this tiny list and never stray away from that. But we should try and bring back these foods and see what we can still eat and keep our optimal health. Um, and that just really rung with me really well because – in order for someone to stick with this, they have to enjoy it. And if they feel like they can't eat that, they can't eat that, they can't eat this, um, it can be really hard on someone. And I, I totally agree that you know we need some of these restrictive elimination diets for a short period of time to help do some healing. But oftentimes, these people can bring back some foods. Mark's even come out and talked about um, you know soaking legumes to, to be able to remove the phytic acid and the lectins um, to really reduce them which are these anti-nutrients that bind to minerals and keep them from digesting and they can bother our digestion. But if we soak these legumes, we can really get rid of the majority of those. And uh, he's kind of, you know, spoken out in the last, I think he had a blog post last early this year, early 2017, I think about it. And it was just like, Hey, like, really there's some good things in here. There's a really good amount of fiber. There's some good mineral content. There's some good vitamin content. And you know, they're a little higher in carbohydrates, but if you can afford those carbs, maybe you're an active, you know, athlete or, you know, you've got a really active job, you're a construction worker, whatever, you can afford this carbohydrate load and there's some really good things in there. And, uh, that spoke to, I love beans. Um, but I definitely know that if I don't soak them, they do bother my digestion, but I've noticed when I soak them and I, and I prepare them properly, um, that I don't have a problem with them and that, you know, as long as, you know, I'm not going crazy on them and eating, you know, two cups a day and getting 300 carbohydrates from them, that I'm okay. Um, you know, I actually just had a, a tostada on a grain free tortilla earlier today for dinner that had, uh, that had some beans on it and they were fantastic. Nice. So you've been uh, you've been working as a health coach for about a year and a half as well now. Is that right? Yeah, about a year and a half, two years. Okay. So I just want to pick your brain a little bit as for like if uh, we were to be your client, right? Um, mm-hmm. If there was like three pieces of advice that you could give your client to to follow. Um, to get the most success with working with you, you know, do you have like three, three tips or something that you would want to share with them to, you know, to help them get through this, the, the lifestyle change or whatever you're doing with them? Yeah. So what I noticed, and this went through experience of coaching people and failures, um, is that the, and this wasn't necessarily their fault. A lot of this was on mine because I wasn't coaching them in this. This was that where their mindset is. Um, and, now at this point, I'm not willing to work with people unless they're willing to go through some mindset um, coaching first. Mm-hmm. Because until we get this mindset in the right place, uh, realize that people just relapse all the time. They're always they just go back and they binge eat or they you know just go off the rails. And I don't hear from them for three weeks. I'm like, what happened? And it was their mindset's just not in the right place. And that could be you know something that's they're their why, their goal, their reason isn't enough. It's not strong enough. Um, you know, one a really good uh, quote that I like, and I can't even remember who it is now, um, is, you know, basically just talking about that, you know, until your why is stronger than whatever challenge you face, you'll lose. Because when that strong challenge comes and your why isn't enough to stand against it, well, that challenge is going to win. Um, and so, so often people are like, oh, I want to lose 20 pounds. Okay, well, you lost 20 pounds, then you go back to doing your same old habits. But why did you want to lose that 20 pounds? You wanted to look better, you wanted to feel better, you wanted to have more energy, you know, you wanted to be healthier. When you get down to these deeper reasons that never go away, you know, once you lose 20 pounds, you reached your goal, you can stop doing what you're doing. But if your goal to lose, the, if your reason to lose the 20 pounds is because you want to have more energy, you have to continue to do these things because 
you know, you have to keep that weight off to keep that energy or you have to keep that weight off to play with your kids. I work with a lot of parents and I work, you know, I've had a lot of, you know, parents that are in their early 40s or so and they're starting, you know, their kids are 10 years old and they're feeling tired. They can't play with their kids very long. You know, maybe their kids are into sports and they, the kids want to practice with them and the parents are just getting winded and tired because they're 40 pounds overweight and they haven't done anything in 15 years. Um, and yeah, that's a that's a really strong motivator. I take kids every time. New parents, they are they're motivated every time because kids change your life. Uh, I I know that personally. That was a big driver of mine. It has been, um, and and that's something that's never going to go away. So that's my that's my first and biggest one. Um, the the second one is to really you've got to commit. You can't do this halfway. If you're going to change and you're going to make some real changes in your life, in your health, you've got to commit at least 100 you know, as close to 100% for a good two to three months. You've got to give it time. You know, you didn't, and for a lot of people, it's going to take more to start to really feel better, but you didn't create poor health overnight. You know, it, you didn't just wake up one day and all of a sudden you were, the, you know, in the worst health of your life. It was a gradual thing that happened. And so you've got to give yourself that grace to start to, to fix it and change it. And also with that is you're going to create new habits and kind of re begin to reset your body. And again, that habit formation and that reset really takes some time. So just giving yourself this grace, don't think that you're going to do it in three weeks and, you know, you'll just, everything will be fixed and you'll be better. Understand that it is going to be a little bit of a process. Um, and then find ways to enjoy it. You know, find the foods that make you happy, find the foods that, and focus on those. So, you know, I, I work with a lot of dads and it's really easy to convince guys, you know, to, to eat this way when you talk about, you know, steaks and burgers and bacon and eggs and avocados and it's like, yeah, that sounds delicious. Sign me up, you know, and just focus on the things that you get to enjoy. Focus on these foods that you get to eat. Don't worry about all the things that you don't get eat you know that you're not going to be eating don't worry about don't think about oh i'm not going to eat bread think about i get to have steak for dinner tonight and it's going to make me feel good um you know if that's what it is or i'm going to have a plate full of veggies and it's going to make me it's going to be refreshing it's not going to make me feel down and heavy and bloated and tired you know focus on these positive things and that goes back to that mindset um but it's the same with fitness if you hate your workout routine don't do it. Find something else. There are so many different ways to be active and move and be fit that if something doesn't make you happy, then don't do it. Change it. Because again, if we don't enjoy it, we're never going to stick to it. Um, not in the long term. It's just going to, we're going to be frustrated. And, you know, again, going back to that mindset is if we, we need to have a positive mindset in general. Just for that's part of our help is having a positive outlook. So if we're doing a bunch of these things that we don't like, you're really going to be missing a big part of that change in your health. Uh, so those are really my three things is that in that mindset, just kind of it's, you can see why I want that in the very beginning. If people aren't willing to think about that, that it just isn't going to work because really even my two other things come back to this mindset. That's really kind of the foundation of my practice um, as just an overall health coach is that there's got to be this proper mindset in it. And when I changed that and I implemented it with my clients, I saw so much more success. It was night and day. Nice. Yeah. Mindset and why you're doing it. Cause it's going to, you know, everybody's going to have their difficulties. Right. And if you know, if your why is strong, you know, you're going to, you're going to have to lean on that sometimes to, to probably to push you through that. Definitely. So you, um, you know, I mean, we know that change is hard, but um, has there ever been a time where, you know, you had to change your lifestyle too, right? Or did you ever, um, you know, go through a time where you had to give something up that you, you know, that you loved or started adding something like, did you always have this healthy lifestyle and mindset or did you have to go through any kind of changes yourself? So a little bit of both. Um, Fitness wise, I've always been kind of into fitness. Um, so that was never hard. I've always enjoyed working out. I've always enjoyed, you know, being active, hiking, playing sports. So that was always there. Um, and I was incredibly fortunate that I actually did get, you know, pulled into this whole mindset idea at a very young age. Uh, my dad had a library of just personal development books and. Um, from some of the still bigs like Tony Robbins and Seth Godin, 
um, you know, these, these books. And he, it was actually a way for me to earn money is that I could read these books and write reviews on them and I would get paid for them. Um, so I was very fortunate in that. And I think that's part of the reason why it's so easy for me to have a client that I can just I've lived it for so long and it's truly been a, a huge driver in my success in general um, you know in both careers and uh but the diet was I, I definitely struggled I dealt with IBS for 20 years and never knew why um I was just told like yeah you have terrible digestion and sometimes it puts you in excruciating pain and we don't know why well great that didn't help me at all uh, so I just thought it was something I was going to deal with and even when I came across this whole primal paleo ancestral health way of eating, I didn't make the changes with the intent that it would fix my digestion. I didn't even know. And all of a sudden, within a few months, I realized that I hadn't had any episodes. And we're talking about something that was on sometimes a daily, at least a weekly um, occurrence that I would have some sort of just bad reaction um, and what were so you going really, through, hey, Michael? Sorry, was, was it like was it pain? What, what were the symptoms like? Uh, mostly diarrhea, just bad, just bouts of just excruciating pain that would just end in my body not wanting to hold on to anything. Right. It would just sometimes I would eat, and within thirty minutes I was in the bathroom, just in horrible pain. And it could be anything. There were times where tap water first thing in the morning bothered my stomach wow um, and you put up with you that, did that, that for 20 years yeah wow. yeah and so it was and you know i was because of you know i i at the same time it was probably some of it is probably because i had this poor digestion that didn't absorb very well um but i'm also just a naturally slender person so you know i'm longer you know I, i've never gained a lot of weight i could pretty much i still wear the same pants i did in high school you know at the age of 30 <laughs> um but that had started to change i did begin to gain weight but overall it was pretty until i was about 27 i could eat and drink whatever i wanted and not gain weight i was that lucky guy who could live off of pizza and soda and not gain a pound right. and so i did um, because I was like, wow, this is awesome. I can drink soda and, you know, alcohol and have pizza every day and I don't gain a pound. And you know, I, was, I don't want to know what my insides looked like. Um, but, you know, I, so I did. I got away with it. I was, you know, a teenager and then my early teens and, and early 20s. Um, you know, of course I was going to eat junk food and drink whatever I wanted. Uh, and uh, so I, you know, all of a sudden I was dealing with hypoglycemia constantly. I would, what the heck i just ate this huge meal you know at breakfast and it's 11 o'clock and i'm shaking and starving and cranky and you know then i you know now i think back i was like well yeah i had a huge stack of pancakes with fruit and syrup and you know glass of orange juice of course i was hypoglycemic mm -hmm. um and, but yeah i was dealing with all of that and when i changed and got rid of these processed foods got rid of this high carb diet all of that went away and i didn't do it with the intent of changing any of the things i was dealing with it was just the intent of being long, like being healthier for the longevity, realizing, not even thinking that it would fix these problems. And it did really quick. I mean, just about overnight. And yeah, it was just, I definitely had to give up things. Um, I was still eating dairy for a long time. And that was something, and I loved dairy. And I knew I was lactose intolerant, but I loved it. And I thought, you know, maybe this new way will help me. Um, and eventually I had to give it up. And the great thing is, is my gut healed. And now I'm able to include some dairy. It has to be raw or fermented. I still can't do like processed, homogenized, pasteurized dairy. Um, I'm fortunate enough to live in an area where I can legally buy raw dairy. Uh, so I can have raw milk. I can get raw cream. I can get raw cheeses. And so I do. And I can enjoy those on a regular basis. Uh, but if I try and get processed, homogenized, pasteurized dairy... A sink, one or two servings of that, and I'm, it, it affects me. Wow, that's amazing. Um, yeah, so it's it's definitely not a complete. You know, I can still I can bring this back. It's definitely within its parameters, but I'm at least able to enjoy it. And I I've, I love raw milk anyways. It's more expensive, but I love the taste. I love the flavor. It's got better nutrients. Same with raw cheeses. You know, I'm I'm, I'm restricted to only a couple cheeses because it's you know, more expensive to make, it's, you know, more difficult and you're restricted more. But, you know, for me, I love it. It still allows me to have some dairy. And so I'm okay with that. 
Right. Uh, but I definitely had to remove it for a while. Um, and, and I learned that, you know, my body just doesn't tolerate it. I can't even do whey protein. Um, so like whey protein supplements, I can't do those powders. They bother my stuff. I get super bloated from those. Um, so you'll still notice so like if you have some foods, if you step off, you know, you'll, you'll still get those symptoms back again. Is that right? Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And gluten's the biggest one. Um, for sure. If I have like the normal everyday processed wheat, oh man, it knocks me off my feet. It's like it just, it, and, it, and it's made it easy to just not go back. That's, um, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. That's pretty motivating. Yeah. Yeah. And it was. And, um, one of the things that I like to say is, you know, I thought, you know, five years ago that I was pretty healthy and I felt pretty good. You know, I sure I had some digestive problems, but I thought I was pretty healthy. Um, and now looking back, I'm like, man, I had no idea what, what it felt like to be healthy or to feel good. And so it's just, I kind of use this line of, you know, you don't know how good good is until you felt this good. Right. Um, and it's, it's just, it's a whole different level. Like it just, you know, and now, you know, I, I slip up and I have those foods and I'm like, Oh my God, I feel terrible. And I'm off my side. And I'm like, I used to feel like this on a regular basis. This this used to be my normal. <laughs> this is what I used to think was good. And I was like, what was going through my mind? Um, so I just, I love that I have this new level of what good really is. Right. Yeah. I think your brain just kind of gets used to one thing and then, um, you don't really realize how bad it is until you, till you feel good. And then, and yeah. then you realize that. Right. So let's see. I want, can you give us some tips because you talked about cooking and you know, that's where I see, uh, quite a few of my clients just, you know, they, they say they're lazy cooks or they, you know, they just don't have the energy or they just don't like to cook. So I was wondering if you could, you know, give us some tips or, you know, something that along the lines of how we can make all of this easier, like, do you prescribe to pre-preparing meals? Like what kind of tips do you give your clients for this? Yeah. So a lot of people are kind of surprised by my first bit of it. For someone who doesn't like to cook, doesn't want to spend a lot of time or doesn't know how to cook is get rid of the cookbooks. My biggest riff with cookbooks is that they are tedious, they have 30 different ingredients and they take two hours to make. And they're great for the, you know, on the week, on the weekend special occasion, dig out the cookbook, totally impress some people, but your everyday meals, you will be so bogged down with most of these cookbooks. It's just learn how to cook protein. So learn how to cook your meats, learn how to cook chicken and then learn how to cook steak because it can be somewhat different chicken. You want cooked all the way. Um, beef can be really forgiving because you don't have to cook it all the way. So if you just kind of sear it and you're okay with eating medium rare meat, it's cool. You know, if you're open to different temperatures of steak, then that's a great way to go because you didn't necessarily meet mess it up. You just cooked it less. You know, if you under chicken, you messed it up. You need to cook it more. Um, right. But just learning these basic principles of cooking and then realize that this doesn't have to be crazy. The best way to make really simple meals taste really good is seasoning, salt and herbs and just spices and put more than you think. So like salt, especially, I mean, I, the number one thing I see people home cooks do is, and even professional cooks is they don't salt their meats enough. Meat can take up like put salt you could pour salt out on a plate and roll your steak in it and that's like how it should be <laughs> okay i mean you could really like crust your steak and, and it'll be the best steak you ever had if you crusted it in salt you'd be like oh my goodness what was i missing this whole time um and, and so salt and herbs and spices put more on than you think one herbs are a great source of antioxidants and polyphenols it's one of the best sources that we get dietarily is from herbs so they have great healthy compounds in them um and so fresh herbs dry herbs use both you know and, and just when i cook a steak i use it i put it in a cast iron i sear it really hot and it's got garlic and herbs sitting in tons of fat and i'm just and i'm pouring that back over the steak constantly and the, the, they just infuse that flavor um and but even just like you know, chopping up herbs and throwing it on 
especially meats, like just pile on the garlic and herbs onto these things. Same with veggies. People are like, oh, I don't like veggies. I'm like, no, you just think you don't like veggies because you grew up eating steamed veggies. And of course you don't like steamed veggies. No one does. They're gross and boring. Um, right. But if you take if you take just about any veggie, cut it up, put it on a, on a roasting pan with some you know garlic and oil and salt and pepper, I guarantee you, you're probably going to like it. It's insane how different a vegetable can taste when you cook it the right way. Yeah. Um, I do love batch cooking though for people. I don't personally because I, I've been in professional kitchens for 15 years so I can make most meals within 20 or 30 minutes, you know, dinners, you know, with several different parts as I'm used to being able to do that in a kitchen. But for most people who aren't that fast, I think batch cooking is phenomenal. Spend one or two days a week, you know, even if you do it in the middle of the week and the end and, you know, on a Sunday and Wednesday, you know, whatever you need to do, batch cook a bunch of vegetables, roast off a bunch of veggies. So that all you have to do is heat them up really quick, hmm. you know, Roast off a whole chicken or make a whole pot roast or hard boil some eggs. Set yourself up for success because it's so much easier because that's our biggest complaint, right? We get home from a long day at work and we don't want to cook a meal. So we get takeout or we order a pizza and then now we're, you know, we're like, oh, well, that was ruined. So have these things ready. You know, on the weekend, cut up a bunch of veggies that you're going to throw into a salad. Cut up some peppers, cut up some red onion, cut up some cucumbers, you know, these carrots and these different foods that you can just throw together in, you know, omelets or in uh, a salad and you're, you're ready to go. I think canned meats are phenomenal. Things like canned sardines, canned wild salmon, canned tuna, that they're these just easy proteins that are cooked, they're ready to go. You've got your salad, you know, you put a little bit of good dressing that you made, um, you know, in a little container and you can go to work with protein a great you know a ton of veggies from your salad and a good dressing and that's so easy i probably eat that four times a week nice um, and, and you know i probably get five or six servings of veggies just to my salad just to my salad it's not counting my dinner that's probably going to have two or three more servings hey is there any storage there's any storage suggestions you know like especially for salads how do you how do you store them to keep them fresh do you have any secrets to keeping it fresh? Uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, I really like putting in like a sealed baggie with like a, a moist paper towel. Don't, you really get it like moist and then just kind of really just wring it all the way out and just kind of lay that over and that can just help keep it crisp. And you don't need to close the bag. You can actually leave it open. Um, a lot of herbs or if you have something like a, a head of lettuce, it still has the bulb intact. You can actually soak that in a, like a jar of water, and that'll really help keep it fresh. Well, you mean just keep it in the water in the refrigerator? Yeah. So, Michael, um, what what do you do for exercise? Like, what's your favorite form of exercise? What do you, what's your what's your typical day or week look like? My favorite are any kind of compound exercises. As much as I love being in the gym, I love to be able to get it done efficiently um so i love being able to exercise that make that use multiple movements or muscles so things like squats and deadlifts clean and jerks uh shoulder presses <clears throat> things that are going to allow my body to use several different motions and muscle groups at the same time um they're also just really good at building all of the different systems in our musculoskeletal system so not just you know working the single bicep muscle, but all of the supporting tissues around it. My biggest riff with, uh, you know, exercise equipment is they isolate a muscle. And so, you know, people who use these machines, you know, they, maybe they use the leg press and then you ask them to do a squat and they can't do it. Hmm. They're terrible at it because this leg press isolates just those specific large muscles. Right. And so all of these support muscles, um, that are so, so important the ligaments and the tendons and all of those other parts that help support the muscle aren't getting worked because that's the machines doing it. The machines balancing that weight. All you're doing is moving it. And that just takes the big muscles. But when you have to balance, you have to move and hold things in the proper angle and spot that it really helps support all of those things. So a really big proponent of using dumbbells or barbells and doing these compound movements. dumbbells are great because they really stabilize each it's like you know doing dumbbell presses 
of your chest instead of a barbell press is going to build that support even more because now each arm is having to individually support. Um, and it's just, that's personally for me, I like, I want total health. You know, I don't necessarily want to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. I just want to be healthy and I want to support that system. Some practical strength and functional exercises. Exactly. So what about cardio? Do you, um, do you, do you run or jog or walk? What, um, uh, I do lots of walking and hiking. I am fortunate to live in a in the you know beautiful part of of the country where we have lots of you know hiking trails and mountains and things like that. I've done back, back overnight back packing trips, um, but <clears throat> as far as running, I I wrestled and did soccer through through school, and I was forced to run far more than I ever want to, right. and. I hate running with a passion. I don't. I've, I've got nothing against people who do it and enjoy it. That's great if you enjoy it. Uh, it is like the most. If I, you know, had to be like the worst punishment that someone could do, it'd be making me just run and run and run. I would just hate every minute of it. Um, for as far as like cardio, if I do, I actually really enjoy rowing. Um, just in like the gym on like a rower, or even just going out for like a bike ride. Um, but really what I like to do, uh, get out and just do like small scale climbing, like just going out and finding like a 50 foot rock wall that's, you know, not straight up and down because I don't have equipment, but something that has like kind of stepped up that I can, you know, just get out there and climb on, um, or just go for an intense hike that really, you know, forces me to get on my hands and, you know, feet sometimes because it's so steep and I have to kind of crawl up. Um, those are really like if I could do all the time, I, I wish I had access, easy access to something like that, that I could do on a weekly basis. All right. So yeah, that's like fun, functional strength too, right? They're still building those exactly. muscles in a proper way and you're in nature too. Exactly. So doesn't it rain there quite a bit? You'd be, does it oh, rain? Yeah. yeah. So you, <laughs> you just have to walk no matter what you just put your, put your rain gear on. And... Yep. Yep. Nice. Do you have a do you have a morning routine or a ritual anything that you do to to start your day? So I'm really fortunate in that I'm not that person that gets rushed in the morning. Uh, you know, like I said, I spent most of my life in the culinary industry where I wasn't going into work till you know maybe lunchtime, so I never had a busy morning. So I could really enjoy it, and I've really loved that with my kids because it gives me the time to just enjoy the morning with them. And on the days that I work, a lot of times, you know, I get up, the boys usually are what wake me up uh, about seven, seven thirty. <laughs> They're coming in and waking me up. That's pretty good. We'll just, you know, yeah. And we'll have, you know, we have time to get together and then I, I get them ready for the day. I make their breakfast. Well, all three of us will sit down and eat. Uh, and then <laughs> usually they're wanting to go outside. They, I've got a nice fenced in yard. So I, I love that. You know, they just know after breakfast, they like to go outside, you know, chase each other, kick the ball, whatever. And uh, I, you know, I make my coffee. I do a French press that I use a hand grinder for. So it's a burr grinder, which is just a type of coffee grinder. And I hand crank it myself. And it's just this ritual that I really enjoy and just present in making my coffee. And for whatever reason, I enjoy it, even though it takes like 10 minutes to get my coffee. Um, I really enjoy it. Uh, so, you know, I grind my own coffee, I steam, the, you know, boil the water and then the French press. And I just almost the anticipation of it makes it that much more enjoyable every day. You know, nice. I put my hand in and, and I'm sitting there waiting for it. And it's just I enjoy it. So I sit down outside and watch them and have my coffee. Um, and I answer my emails. And uh, and, yeah, that's pretty much just about every morning um, cool. that way. And it's, it just allows me to kind of just ease into the day. And I really like it. That's awesome. So, Michael, do you have a motto or a phrase that's important to you? Uh, yeah. So, I, I, uh, a lot of people get so kind of, they get kind of confused when I say this. So there's this famous quote of knowledge is power. And I used to believe it for a long time. And I thought that was great. And I realized it was just a bunch of baloney because it's only part of the picture and that we can, the smartest man in the world who does nothing is no better than the man who knows nothing. 
and that we have to apply that knowledge and that the application of anything, even if it's only a little knowledge, is so much more powerful. So it's we have to have this execution. So we, we can know all these things, but it isn't powerful until we execute, until we apply it. And that's where the true power lies. You know, the the person who only has a little bit of knowledge, but all the will to execute and all the will to apply, do so much more than the man who knows everything and does nothing. Um, and so my, my biggest thing is just go out and do. Just work, execute, apply. Anything you know, just apply it. Even if you only know a little bit, apply it and execute on those things and you will go far. What's one word of advice that you were given that's helped you in your life? Uh, it was exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I thought that would be the same. It, 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 yeah, it, it was just just work, right? So, yeah. you know, just put your head down. Don't worry about what's going around around you. Don't worry about what someone's going to think. Don't worry about what, you know, Joe Schmo down the road is. And, and one of the things that we get so stuck on is, you know, we're like, oh, I don't want to do that because, you know, everyone is going to think this about me. But really sit down and think about who that everyone is. You know, who is this everyone? And most of the time, it's people that don't actually matter. Right. Because the people who do matter in your life and who are influencers in your life are always going to be there supporting you and cheering you on when you're doing powerful, good, moving things. Um, and so really just take the time. And I, this was something that was really – actually, I guess this would be something that's different. Um, but a friend – did a great uh, Facebook live about this. She's a great um, colleague and, and peer I love and I talk to all the time and we shoot back and forth on this mindset stuff. And that's really what she talked about. It's just think about who your everyone is and then create this new everyone, the people that are in your circle, your close circle that truly matter and realize that, you know, the people that, that, that you do consider close are always supporting you. And so if you're making a positive change and going in a positive direction, that you don't have to be fearful of their judgment because they're going to be there to support you. And when you do that, it just relieves all of this tension of failure, this fear of failure, because our fear of failure isn't the failure itself, but the judgment that comes with it, right? It's the judgment of what the world and everyone else around us is going to think. But when you're able to let go of the of the judgment of people who don't actually matter in your life it's it's life changing mm. it really is that is awesome yeah you know i my daughter um she just started she's been doing dance and she had to get up and uh do her you know do a dance routine in front of the crowd and she was really quite nervous and she would get nervous and and shy about doing the smallest of things and so you know a couple of nights before the um, recital, I you know, I was speaking to her and I said, look, all you got to remember is that the audience loves you. Everybody in the audience is rooting for you and they love you just like your family does. And we talked about that for a little while. And she went out and did her routine and she had a smile on her face the whole time. She wasn't nervous. And, you know, she's just been using that for all of her other things now. And it's just it was worked really well for her. So thanks for bringing that up. I love that. That's awesome. Michael, so, you know, tell us, I know we talked about it in the introduction. Tell us a little bit more about what you're working on professionally right now, the transition that you're going through. Yeah, so uh, I did a couple different things. One that's really cool that I really, like, just started a few days ago from, you know, when we are recording this. I actually just took a job in a functional medicine practitioner's office as a as her nutritionist. Super excited about that. Just, I've really just enjoyed working with these types of clients. I no longer take clients who their main goal is weight loss. I have no problem referring them. I have plenty of coaches and, and different people who work with that that I can refer to. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's just not what I'm driven to. I only have X amount of slots, and I really want that to be focused on these people who you know, need that, need this type of help, something that I'm interested in, want to work with. I think weight loss is a great goal. It's just not the goal that I want to help with. I'd love to, you know, funnel people to a different way. And that's great because now I'm helping another coach as well, build business. Um, and so it's, I don't want to take someone that I'm 
not going to help the best. Uh, and I want it to be just as good for them as it is for me. Them paying me money is great. And I, it's not that I want to turn away income, but I want them to succeed. And I don't feel like I'm in it enough for weight loss to give them everything that they deserve. So if somebody wants to work with you, Michael, how, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Definitely my website, because from my website, you can get the, um, the to calendar and all my contact. Uh, I would give that now. Um, it's also going to be changing, but I'm just set it up so that this new web address automatically funnels to the new website once it's all set up and done. Uh, but the, the current website is www.v super dash human project.com. Um, and my email is Michael at that same address, Michael at the super, the super dash human project.com. Um, you can find my calendar right there. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as well at, uh, the underscore super underscore project underscore. No, he was the superhuman project with each space is an underscore. Um, I'll put some links uh, in there sure too. Get the, yeah, yeah, we'll get some links in there for sure. Uh, I didn't make it the easiest. So that's one of the reasons why I'm changing because that dash screws everyone up. But I really <laughs> wanted that address. So I had to put the dash in there. To- for sure. And um, tell us about the clinic that you're at now. Yeah, so uh, the doctor is Dr. Linda Goggin. She is a traditionally trained medical doctor. She has an MD license. She is a board certified uh, family physician. Uh, but she realized that the system was terrible. It was broken. It wasn't. It wasn't working for chronic problems. We have a great system for acute care. Don't get me wrong. Trauma, birth, all of these things we we do phenomenal in acute care but we can't apply the same philosophy to chronic care. It's a completely different beast, right? And it's the problem is we're trying to apply that same philosophy to chronic care and it's not working. It's failed miserably. And she was one of those great doctors who realized that. She realized this just isn't working. She's been practicing since 1999. Um, She's got lots of years in her belt. She's been a medical director. She's been a fan, you know, the old timey family doctor where she was all over the place in a small town. Um, she's kind of done a little bit of everything and she's, she just realized that this isn't working. Um, and she went through the Institute of Functional Medicine to, to be a certified functional medicine practitioner. And she's applying that in our family care. Um, and as a primary care physician, which is a really powerful thing to be able to be a primary care physician who is also functionally medicine trained. There's not a whole lot of them out there. Um, she's the only one in our county and probably for other, probably the county south of us as well. Uh, it's, it's a really powerful thing. I'm super excited to work there. Um, we're doing a lot of things working with autoimmunity, working with diabetes management. Um, she does some, some other uh, modalities of care, things like uh, EFT, um, which is a really powerful um, way of just releasing this uh, like energy tension that we just hold. Uh, and it's... Um, I'm skipping as to what EFT stands for right now. Um, uh, she uh, and she does just uh, she uh, is also in um, uh, hypnotherapy. She's trained in hypnotherapy, emotional focused therapy. There we go. That's there EFT, go. Um, and it, it, it and it's uh it's 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 called EFT tapping therapy, um, and it's basically working through the lymphatic system and actually helping drain our, our lymph nodes. Um, it can really help detox a lot of energy and, and tension that we hold in our body. Um, so she does a couple different things, uh, and she realized that she needs someone. While she gets some, she understands nutrition on a basic level, she really wants someone that that's their thing, to be able to sit down because she understands that it's a huge part of our health. Um, and she wants someone who can truly help with that. And so uh, that's where I come in. Uh, and uh, I'll be there meeting all the time with uh, very often with her patients for nutritional consults um, and, you know, helping them set up a plan that works for them uh, and, and working alongside with her, making sure they're getting the adequate testing. Um, and so I'm really excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we're in the transition of kind of renaming the clinic. So we're looking at feel good. Uh, feel good function of medicine and uh, that's in our kind of tagline that we were actually just working on today is uh, eat what is it eat think and move good to feel good 
Um, and it's realizing that we need, we can't just, you know, it's not this one thing we need to eat. We need to be moving and we need to have a positive mindset. It's all the things that I've been practicing that she believes in too. So it's great. I love it. Um, I, we're both super excited to be working with each other. And, uh, yeah, so there's, I think there's going to be a lot of great things coming out of there. I have a lot of big plans for 2018 to help grow, help her grow the clinic. Yeah, that's exciting. Congratulations on all that. And, uh, and turns out. And, uh, hey, Michael, thank you so much for your time. The, you know, this has just flown by for me. I, uh, I really enjoyed talking to you and, you know, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It's been a blast. Thanks so much for listening to Unleash Your Genius with your host, Dr. Brian Peterson. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit UnleashYourGenius.com. We'll catch you next time. Hey, what's up? I hope you guys liked this episode, man. And if you did, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe and most importantly, give us a review and give us a five-star rating too, please. All right. See ya. So you've been, you've been practicing as a chiropractor then since then? Yeah. 19 years. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, that's one thing I've always loved. I went to a chiropractor as a baby. So like, I remember as like, I mean, some of my earliest memories are literally like being on a chiropractor table. Wow. <laughs> so, How cool. Yeah. Yeah. My parents, um, I, my dad was just always never really kind of always questioned, you know, normal medicine. Um, and so they had a, there was a really good family chiropractor. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I still, I, it was like one of my favorite childhood memories was on like the, uh, I always forget what it's called, but it's like that table that roll, like it has like a roller that goes along the spine. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, I still like, that's just one of my earliest like favorite memories was being on that table. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, we get lots yeah. of kids coming in and, you know, it's like I'd see them when they were babies and now they're like driving their cars to the clinic. and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man, makes you feel old. <laughs>